Alright guys, Seth Grubber here today and I wanted to talk about, given Fort Worth has just concluded, the biggest problems right now that I see in competitive play in Black Ops 4. I'm not going to talk about Blackout, I'm not going to talk about League play particularly, I'm going to talk about the actual competitive game mode itself. What are the issues within the actual game that the pros play, not external issues particularly, things that really affect what's going on for the pros and also for the fans trying to watch the game. There's been some issues here which have remained issues since all the way back since the game has launched. And considering now we've had two open events out of four, of course we have London up next and then Anaheim followed by CWL Champs of course right at the end of the year and also the playoffs event of course for the Pro League. We're also a third of the way through the Pro League so I thought now is a realistic time to mention these things again in the hope that maybe they will get fixed, maybe at least at the very least they will come to more attention of more people within the community. So I hope you guys enjoy, I'm sure you guys will have your own problems and issues that you find with the game that you want to leave down in the comment section below and another thing to leave down the comment section is any final questions for the Q&A because you know 10,000 subscribers I hit a few days ago now I want to do the first part of the Q&A tomorrow I figured I've probably got enough questions to split it over two separate videos so if you do have some final questions anything at all Call of Duty related or not then leave them down in the comment section below and if they're you know if they're reasonable then I'll do my best to answer them so like if you enjoy subscribe if you are new as always and let's hop right into it here so there is one big issue which I'll get to towards the end of the video the first thing I wanted to do was was to go through some of the smaller ones. So the first thing to discuss here is Fog of War. This is a new feature added to Black Ops 4. Now, if you don't know what exactly this is, it's effectively something where on the minimap, it can show enemies as red dots who you've seen in your field of vision. If you see someone on your screen, they're within your field of vision or they're within what the game thinks is your field of vision, which is an important factor, they appear as a red dot on the minimap and all of your teammates can see them. So quite often, one of my teammates will be running around, there'll be someone sitting in a corner they will run past them, but the game will think that it's somehow in their field of vision and they will appear as a little red dot on the minimap and I can call out to them like turn around someone's behind you. Quite often I'm trying to chase someone and because of some sort of glitch with the fog of war, they know I'm behind them and then they turn around and kill me. It makes trying to flank and all this sort of stuff impossible. Now in public matches, I don't, it's an annoying feature, but I don't super mind it in public matches given the fact that, well, it helps teams kind of communicate to some degree without having to communicate, but in competitive it really is a difficulty and a burden especially with the way it's glitched to some degree I'm pretty sure there's some issues where I don't see someone or someone doesn't see someone but they're still peering on the minimap one other big issue with it is after you see someone you've maybe peppered them up a couple of bullets you jump behind cover you can still see their red dot moving away depending on where they go all the time I will pepper someone up hop behind cover look at my minimap and the red dot will keep moving even when I can't see them anymore I'll know which bit of cover they've gone to I'll know if they're pushing me or not and that sort of feature is very broken indeed. Of course, it is just maybe a minor complaint, but it does have some issues on the game. And Clayster reckons here in the comment section on this Reddit thread that, you know, can't GA a setting because the tournament organizers handle all lobbies, try to get it changed, but Trek said it's a core gameplay mechanic like reloading or healing. So that's why they won't remove it. Not sure what else there is to do. We all agree it's busted and I've provided clips of it being so. Fog of War is the most ridiculous thing ever. So there was another Reddit thread a couple of weeks ago talking about the gunship being added to the gentleman's agreement. And this comment here from Nighthawk and Brian and Saints Reply, who's the coach of a United, pretty much does sum up what the issue is with the streaks in this game. Saint particularly says, watched Cap go on a two kill streak yesterday and get a lightning and health charm due to assist and crash points. And if you guys remember at the Pro League qualifier, Red Reserve versus G2, it went to a game five round 11. Rated got one kill with a Maddox onto Chino, who pulled out his Tempest. And as a result, Rated got his Annihilator, which helped them win that game five round 11 and keep their chances to qualify for the league live of course which they did by beating team Sween later on so of course we have this issue right now where if you kill someone or if you pepper someone up a little bit just one bullet into them your teammate finishes them off you get a hundred points as if you got that kill and this is a big deal because midnight were particularly in the first couple of weeks of the pro league excellent at making use of this they would always be team shooting people constantly getting a hundred points and as saint says here cap getting two kills effectively and getting lightning and hellstorm due to the assist points is a very big deal. Now whether this is broken is an interesting one but I do feel like the fact that you can pop one bullet into someone your teammate finishes them off you get a hundred points is a bit of an issue because of course that also counts towards your specialist progression as well and that's why I think in large part a lot of the score streaks have been gentlemen's agreemented out of the game due to the fact that well 
if you get a score streak in addition to getting the really powerful specialists then you know there's too much op stuff flying around so and i think a large part of that is as a result of these assist points that you get now there was also this very interesting research done by drew lu 13 into how much the beginning spawns matter in hardpoint now this may be seen as a small deal but it actually could be rather important this is the data so for every single hardpoint map he's gone through and looked at what win percentage of the first hardpoint initial break do teams have spawning on certain sites and this really leads me into the big issue which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes time here but this effectively is the same idea but it's not as pronounced of course in hardpoint than it is in control which gives you a bit of a spoiler as to what the real big issue I think is in Black Ops 4 competitive right now but you can see in hardpoint on these initial engagements especially on gridlock if you spawn at the house you have like a second a couple of seconds advantage getting to the hill first and the guys on the parts almost always just have to hold back and try and play engagements in order to get that initial break which of course definitely is an imbalance something that ideally shouldn't be there at the same time it is crucial to Tonight, that the team that chooses the map the other team gets to choose what side they spawn on when I was doing the vetoes at CWL Birmingham last year because I was doing some volunteering as like a referee for some of the games this is effectively how it worked if you choose to play gridlock hardpoint and that's your map pick then the other team will get to choose the side they want to spawn on so if you have this big of a disparity here between the opening breaks then you know do you really want to choose gridlock hardpoint when you know that you're very most likely to be at a disadvantage right at the outset of the game which in an ideal world World shouldn't be the case at all these kind of disparities happen an awful lot across the games as well of course there are some draws which he draws to attention here but a lot of the times it's one way or the other and it can be very imbalanced now talking more on the fans perspective for a second the codcaster has not changed since all the way back at the start of the game when the game was very first released we talked about how the codcaster was not very nice to read and I think to some degree it's grown on a few of us but there was a lot of suggestions and a lot of potential graphics made to how the codcaster could look a lot better here this is a picture that deserto put together all the way back in december after vega showing that well you really cannot see what's going on particularly and the zeros look very much like eights at time if you're trying to watch on mobile if you can't watch in well even 720p sometimes it's not that easy to see 1080p obviously it's very nice but 480p you're going to really struggle to see anything other than the score at the top and even then it's not that easy to see let me give a comparison to the japanese qualification tournament for fort worth so before before Fort Worth happens or before any event happens like the major open events there is some sort of qualification tournament internationally this was Japan's one and this was the codcaster that they were using they haven't done anything apart from changing the font of the overlay but it looks so much clearer already even at the top the normal score but it looks so much better and particularly the uh, the names of the players and also of course how many kills and deaths they have the zeros look a lot better sorry this is cut off a little bit but you see my point here the fact that this hasn't been changed several months into the game is pretty devastating if you're not going to change the actual layout which I think is questionable at best at least make it easier to see for those who aren't blessed with god tier internet or happen to be watching on a phone okay so now let's talk about what i see as the main problem i'd like to thank easy mac for putting together all of these stats right here i did reach out to bevels as well the coach of envy just to talk about whether the pros had tried to do anything about this and he says that in a similar line to what clayster was talking about with fog of war they have attempted to reach out to the guys at track and the guys at mlg but there isn't really doesn't seem to be much they can do about this so let's get right into it the real biggest problem i find with black ops for it now and it honestly makes it very frustrating to watch at times is control in search and destroy i'm sure you guys are aware that if you go to 5-5 if you go to the round 11 the team that has i'm pretty sure it's the most score in black ops 4 in previous games it's been the most kills but the team that has the most score gets the defensive side no matter what now this could be a blessing and a curse because on some maps offense is favored for example back on octane in ghost it was encouraged that if you were in a clutch situation and it wasn't looking likely you should just die deliberately to make sure you don't get any kills so that you can get offense in the final round and the other guys get defense to give you an advantage but that's really another story in black ops 4 s and d works exactly the same way as it traditionally has control however does not have anything like that if you are the defense in the very first round of control you are also the defense in the very last round it always goes chronologically defense offense defense offense defense as it were so way back in october i did a podcast with tan on this channel we talked about the issues with control and we raised this one a lot of people 
people were talking about how you could potentially do a demolition style thing where in the very final round you have a single objective that both teams have to try and capture and whichever team captures it then they win the final round. Additionally or you know alternatively you could do a similar thing to search and destroy just give defense in the final round to the team with more score or at least give the preferred side the team with more score for example or the team that has done better throughout the four rounds they've just played who has the most kills throughout these four rounds tally them up and give that team the preferred round in the final one but that's not how it is which means that if you get defense on the very first round you will have defense on the very last round and in three of the four maps I'm about to look at this causes a major issue and it's not competitive in the slightest so easy Mac I'll leave his links down in the description box below as I always do has gone through all of the matches from the Pro League so far. This isn't Fort Worth because unfortunately I did reach out to JP of MLG that puts together the COD stats and supposedly he can't give out any of this kind of data to the public considering he you know, gives it to the pro community. They have something going on there with COD stats but regardless, EasyMac has gone through it all manually and has put it all together here. The attacking wins and losses on every single map so far in the Pro League. Now it is crucial to note that Division B were much better on the offense than Division A were so maybe that shows a change in the meta but regardless the fact that these maps are largely very imbalanced causes a big issue. One other thing to note is that the third round and the fifth round seem to be the most important in control. Of course the fifth round is very important on the back at well it's the deciding factor but the third round is very key because that's when specialists seem to come into play. So if you can win round three you have a great chance of either winning it there or going all the way to round five and winning that as well. The way it currently works if you have defense or if you have the preferred side whatever it may be on round three you also get it in round five and I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of games especially this one here with reciprocity versus Gen G attack loses every single offensive round defense wins every single defense and a lot of the time here the defense has a fantastic advantage in terms of if they get those opening set of engagements they can push up so far and honestly the game at times is rather boring especially when one of the sides is super heavy this does not seem to be competitive in the slightest at the current time and it causes a big issue so I've been looking at Arsenal control for a while here we have a 56% defense win ratio on this map. Now frequency is the odd one out but this one it's the other way around. Attackers have a huge advantage. 62% of rounds are won by attackers which is verging on two-thirds of rounds which is truly remarkable if you get offense first on frequency you have a huge advantage gridlock is definitely the most balanced and is it any surprise that the pros seem to try and play gridlock more than any other map because as i just mentioned about due to the hard points if you choose a map like frequency if you choose a map like seaside which we'll look at in a second your opponent i'm pretty sure this is at least how it worked last year gets to choose what side they start on so if you choose a frequency the opponents will choose to start on the offense side if you choose a seaside which is also really imbalanced as i say we'll look at that in a second they all choose to start on the defensive side gridlock it doesn't matter too much 44 attacking rounds one in the pro league to 48 defensive rounds so on the whole this is the most balanced map this is why you see it most often seaside you also see a fair bit but look at that 63 and a bit percent win rate on the defensive side this map is unquestionably the most defensive sided i think we see it very very often indeed that a team will get the first wave of kills at the B objective on the defensive side they'll be able to push through B they'll be able to push up through middle get control of that top building there with a pool table and that and then they can just lock down and spawn trap the guys for the rest of the game it's very difficult to do on the other way around and this really causes an issue because you may have completely outslayed your opponent on the defensive rounds take Seaside for an example say you start on the offense you have a really closely fought round it comes down to a 1v1 you end up losing that round so you go down 1-0 then on the defense you just crush the enemy you win with 20 lives left they don't even get a touch on the hard point or the objective it's now 1-1 the same thing exactly happens again the next two rounds you lose a super close offensive round and then you crush them on the defense guess what in the very last round they have defense nothing you can do about it the fact that you've completely outplayed them in terms of the slaying and in terms of the score in the first four rounds on the balance of things doesn't matter at all they still get the advantage going into the final round and say for example they managed to win again and we get a five defense wins situation like we had here eg versus gen g so from my perspective that is the biggest problem in competitive black ops 4 right now if this was simply changed so it depended on kills or something like that i wouldn't have an issue with it but it's very frustrating to watch when you see a team consistently get outplayed on their defensive sides but still manage to win because defense has such an advantage or i guess you could say the same on the attacking side of frequency and then they still get the advantage in the final round when they really didn't deserve it so 
I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on this, guys. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. I'd greatly appreciate it as always. Thank you guys so much for watching, as always, and I will see you next time.